Witness P0604 is the first among nine witnesses summoned to appear before trial chamber 5A in the Ruto and Sang trial. He testified through video link from an undisclosed location in Kenya from 4th to 16th September 2014. The witness was represented by Mr. Gregory Mutai as ordered by the judges solely for the discrete question of possible self-incrimination. Witness 0604 testified with the protective measures of a pseudonym and image and voice distortion and was testifying partially in private sessions. He and the eight other prosecution witnesses recanted or changed their statements given to the prosecution. Now he said that another person convinced him to give a false statement to the office of the prosecutor in order to receive financial benefits. He was examined by the prosecution's senior trial lawyer, Anton Steinberg. Uh, Mr. Witness, you just told the chamber in private session that you, in fact, never attended any Harambe at Kapta Bay Secondary School on this date, um, and that, in fact, you'd made up what is contained in your statement in that regard. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so my question was, for what purpose did you invent this incident and tell it to the OTP investigators? It was to show that Mr. Ruto uh, incited the, the, the public against the Kikuyu community. Uh, was this part of the plan then to fi fix Mr. Ruto as you put it? Yes. During one of public sessions, the witness confirmed that some of his statements about the events that took place on the 9th of 30th December 2007 in Tarbo Town were true. He said that he did hear some ululation and gunshots and had seen people running towards Tarbo Police Station. He further said that, in fact, it was the police that were firing in order to disperse possible fighting between Kikuyus and Kalenjins. However, the looting incidents on 2nd January 2008 that he described in his statement, he said, were fabricated. On the prosecution's request, the chamber declared the witness hostile and has authorized Mr. Steinberg to cross-examine witness, to ask him leading questions to explore discrepancies in his statements. Mr. Witness, can I just ask you, are you afraid of anything that might happen to you if you give evidence incriminating the two accused? Sorry? Are you afraid that anything bad might happen to you if you give evidence before this court which incriminates the two accused? One is that I don't have any evidence uh, against the two. And then two, uh, I don't fear anything. Uh, but as I had said, I don't have anything uh, that I think can be uh, an evidence to, 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 to implicate the two on the post-election violence. Defense counsel, Essa File, questioned the witness on behalf of Mr. Ruto's defense. One of the main topics of his examination during public sessions was the diary that the witness provided to the office of the prosecutor together with his initial statement. Sir, very early on in your testimony, you told the court that you provided a false account during your interview with the OTP investigators in July 2013. Is that correct, sir? Yes, it is correct. You also stated that the events you wrote in your diary were there to support the false account that you gave to the prosecution investigators. Is that correct? Very correct. 
And the first observation I would wish to make, having examined your diary, is that all the PEV-related events seem to have been written in the same handwriting. Is that right? Yes, it is right. And I invite your honours to, at the appropriate time, examine the two diaries. But, Mr. Witness, can you confirm that, in fact, all those events were written using the same pen? Is that right? Yes, it is right. Counsel Fowle pointed out to the witness some discrepancies related to the events he described in his diary, especially a fundraising event on the 19th November 2007 attended by Mr. Ruto. The witness confirmed defense counsel SFL assertion that he received between December 2013 and April 2014 5,186 US dollars from OTP as subsistence allowance for his daily expenses in the area where he was relocated. He further also confirmed that he received 1,868 US dollars only in January 2014. And sir, your financial situation as a whole is a very difficult one, is it not? It is. And this is, sir, the reason why the person you call the lady or her promises of money and better life for yourself and your children seduced you to give false evidence? Is that the case? Yes. Mr. Witness, when you testified on Thursday, 4th September, and I'm referring to the transcript at page 77, line 25 to page 78, lines 2. This is what you told the judges. That one of the reasons you gave a false statement to the prosecution, and I quote, was because I have been against Ruto from the beginning, naturally, so that hatred that I had on Ruto also provoked me to give false statement. You recall that, Mr. Witness? Yes. Joseph Kipchumba Keegan Katwa, Mr. Sang's defense counsel, showed to the witness statements he made to the office of the prosecutor. The witness confirmed that he made the two following allegations, that Mr. Sang was negative towards PNU and promoting ethnic tensions and that Mr. Sang had said on the air that fake ballot boxes were being transported. He further said that he was prompted by third party people and OTP investigators to add to his statement something about Mr. Sang. Several audio excerpts from CAS FM broadcasts were played for the witness. In some extracts, in particular, the witness confirmed hearing Joshua Sang interviewing ODM presidential candidate Raila Odinga and that it was Mr. Odinga speaking on the air about possible rigging and reports saying that fake ballot boxes were being transported in vehicles. Witness P0495, the second witness summoned to appear, started his testimony through video link from Kenya on Tuesday. 16th September. Why were nine witnesses summoned to appear by video link before the court in the Ruto and Sang trial? On the 17th of April 2014, the trial chamber 5A granted by majority the prosecutor's request to summons eight witnesses to appear before the chamber in the Ruto and Sang trial. And on the 19th of June, the chamber similarly granted the prosecution request to add one additional witness. 
These are prosecution witnesses who decided not to cooperate or were no longer willing to testify. The judges requested the government of Kenya to assist in serving the summonses to the witnesses and to facilitate their appearance by video link for testimony before the chamber. The chamber considered that the prosecutor's request was justified. First, because the witnesses anticipated testimonies are potentially necessary for the determination of the truth. And second, because a summons, which is a compulsory measure to ensure their appearance before the chamber, was necessary to obtain these testimonies of the witnesses. While the decision to summons the witnesses is currently subject to an appeal before the ICC appeal chamber, the appeal chamber had rejected the defense's request for suspensive effect. That means that the testimonies will go ahead for the time being, and the appeal chamber will decide on the defense appeal in due course. The first witness, summoned to appear, started his testimony on the 4th of September 2014 through video link made possible by a digital connection from a location in Kenya. 